How can I help? What would be most useful for you today? Okay, so I think like I told you before, I, okay, so I started studying in September, haven't studied since grad school, it's a lot of years ago. Um, I didn't want to take a baseline test because I didn't even want to know what the score would be. So I spent the past two and a half months, you know, going over everything. I'm finding that the um, logic games are the most difficult. Um, I haven't studied for a week because it's been Thanksgiving and everything. So I, right now I want to like regroup and I would like your advice on how to start again no, now being familiar with all of the different sections. Um, what would be the best way to start again and, um, and specifically work on the logic games in terms of being able to make the inferences that are necessary from the very beginning. So that's like, sure. I know it's a lot of stuff, but yeah. Well, taking a, a week off isn't a huge deal. It's not as if you're totally starting from scratch. And as you said, you already have a good baseline familiarity with different sections. And so if you want to focus on games, just jump right in and focus on them. If you find that a certain game type gives you more trouble, like a lot of times students will find grouping more difficult than ordering, just jump in with grouping. Do grouping games by type. You could do in-out games, splitting games, matching games, then advance to the more difficult ones after that. Okay. And I saw your, I saw your last um, post and there was like a whole bunch of new games in there that you created. Yeah. Okay. So I'll be, I'll be using those. I mean, I have all of the, um, I have all the old, the booklets and everything like that. Um, so I've been working on those. Some of them, you know, I get, I feel like I'm like the learning curve is going up and then all of a sudden, boom, like, oh my God, you know, now I can't do anything. I don't know, you know, I don't know why that is, but I'm going to go back and, you know, be determined to start again with that. Um, in terms of making the inferences, so I'm pretty comfortable with the setups now. I'm comfortable with the symbols. Um, I pretty much know how to set up any kind of game, even the like really random games. Um, but I have a hard time, um, you know, just really being able to, um, you know, notice them from the start, like where, you know, to, to put the whole piece of the game together. Like that's really difficult for me. I have to, yeah. like, a lot of times I have to go back and do, you know, do it one by one. So I'm not really sure how to... The tougher games take practice. You know, I mean, they're, the games progress in a general order of difficulty in my study plans. And so if you feel like you're getting it and then you're hitting something harder, that's yeah. by design in a way. I wouldn't want to okay. throw anything too difficult at you too early. Okay. And so I try to build a certain momentum into the plans where it's getting going from easier to hard, but I'm starting off with the easiest stuff. Okay. And then let me ask you, it, um, so do you think at this point it would be a good idea to take a baseline test? Um, I haven't taken a full, you know, four hour test yet. When's your target test date? I'm thinking June. I want to like give myself a lot of time. Yeah. I was then, thinking April, but I don't know. I really am starting to think like, I don't know if I'm going to be ready by April. Yeah. Then I don't think you need to take one yet. I would rather okay. you build a strong foundation in each section of the exam before you go on to full length exams. Yeah. Cause I'm afraid I'm going to get discouraged and be like, uh, you know, I don't know if I can do this. Like I'm not, you know, I'm not really aiming for you know, in the 170s, but I would like to, my, my target is 160 if possible. So. Sure. And you've got enough time to make really anything at all happen. But I agree with you that initial diagnostics can be kind of discouraging because you haven't studied everything you're being tested on yet. So of course it's not likely to go well, but right. give it some time. Then in the spring, you know, even March through June or February through June, you could be taking a timed exam every week over those couple of months. Okay. And so in terms of the logic games and the emphasis, you think it's just practice, practice, practice that like it'll, it'll all come together. I mean, I just feel like sometimes I can't see the forest for the trees, you know, I just, I don't know what it is. And then, and then when I see, like when I go over it and I see how it was done, it's like, oh yeah, but I, how come I didn't see that? Part of it is practice and familiarity. And part of it's also that not every game has a ton of inferences you can make up front for some games you can only do so much up front and you'll be doing a lot more in terms of drawing hypotheticals over the course of the game. Okay. And if I'm not like a logical, necessarily like the most logical person, it really is a skill that I can build. You truly believe that? I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I know there's some people that are, you know, that get it right away, but I'm hoping that that's something that I can really build. I mean, I'm like obsessed with this thing. So. Well, the obsession is good. Yeah. And I think, honestly, in my experience, very, very few people, like less than 1% of people, are natural-born geniuses with this stuff. Okay. The good news is that the LSAT is a test of pattern recognition, and they're releasing so many old exams. I mean, there's right. nearly 100 of them. Right. Even if you studied half of them or a third of them, 
and knew them really well, you'd be in a great situation to set yourself up for success on test day. Okay. And when I sit down to finally do a test, how important is it for me to like learn how to do it on the tablet versus on paper? Because I'm, I'm kind of concerned about that aspect as well. Like I don't want to go into the test never having done a tablet test. Yeah, I'd say it's certainly something you should prepare for. I don't think you need to be overly concerned about it because the content of the exam is the same. It's only the delivery mechanism, the format that's changed, but you have enough time to thoroughly acquaint yourself with the digital format. There are a couple of exams on LSAC's site in the digital format, and there will hopefully be more between now and June. I can't imagine there not being. Right. And so you could do plenty of them in that style. I mean, there are some small but significant changes to be aware of. That's what but I was going to ask. For now, at least, I would focus on the content. Okay. But what would you say is like the most significant um, difference? I mean, I've never taken a paper one, so it's not like, you know, I'm comparing, but, or diff- what do you think would be like, you know, could really mess people up, for example? There are two things I'll draw your attention to. One of them is that you can't draw on the questions themselves right. as you can on paper. Mm-hmm. And so to practice for that or simulate that, even with your books, just treat your books like screens don't write on them, do all your work on scratch paper to the side. I've been doing that anyway because I wanted to be able to come back to the exams and maybe do them again if I had to, like the games and stuff. So I've been using scratch paper anyway. Awesome. Yeah, so you're already doing that. The second thing is that on the digital, you can only see one question at a time. Oh, wow. So is it better to review all the questions first or to do them in order or... Well, it depends on the section. I mean, I I still think that there is a value to jumping around Mm -hmm. within a game or within a reading count passage, Right. but there's a certain trade-off there where you have to click around left and right a little bit more. And so that that will be an adjustment rather than having that bird's eye view on paper where you can see everything at once. So that would be something to acquaint yourself with earlier rather than later. And if you wanted to do a a really low-tech version of that, you could even cut out a square in a piece of paper so that you're limiting what you can see to only one question. Right. I think that that would be the most problematic would be in the reading comprehension, not necessarily in the logic games, because I like when I do the reading comprehension, I'm kind of looking at the overall picture anyway, because some of the questions help you get answers for the other questions. Exactly. Yeah. And so that's where jumping around could be useful, but on the digital, it's not as if it's that hard to see the other ones. You just have to tap left and right or click left and right. Okay. So your advice to me would be if I'm like at this point, knowing that I have until June, if I really feel like I want to tackle logic games, I could just focus on logic games because I feel like I'm kind of, you know, the other ones, the other two sections, like reading comprehension for me is, is the easiest one. Um, the analytical reasoning is, is problematic, but it's okay. So I feel like with a cup, you know, since studying with that, I'd be fine. But the logic games is like really my, you know, my weakest area. So you would recommend to me that I just focus on that and until I feel more comfortable and then move on and come back or because I feel like I'm neglecting the other stuff. Yeah. I say you could make the games your predominant focus, like maybe spend 60% on games, 20 on reading comp, 20 on logical reasoning, something like that ratio. Cause you don't want to get rusty on the others and there is room to improve and improve and build your similarity with those sections. But games is the lowest hanging fruit. And it's actually the most perfectible section. And between now and June, you could theoretically do every game ever released. There's no reason you couldn't. And if you really devoted yourself to it and were obsessed with it, as you said, then there's no reason you can't perfect it. And what would you recommend? Like, so as far as timing, I really, I've only done a couple of the games timed because I'm still trying to like, you know, make sure that I am getting them all the answers right first, but I'm still, I'm nowhere near like where I need to be. My games are usually like in the 11 minutes, not, you know, 8.30 or something like they need to be. Yeah. So I have two things. One would be to improve your ability to make inferences up front. As I said, you can't do that for a ton for every game, but most games have something you can do up front to make inferences. Mm -hmm. And the more inferences you make up front, the smoother the game will go. Right. The second thing would be to reuse previous work, previous hypothetical scenarios. And so the correct answer to the orientation question is one example. And then every local if question, if you draw a new diagram for those, those could help you solve the more general global questions in the game. But you do need to redraw the, like, so I know that I'm drawing the general diagram, I'm leaving it up here, 
um, and I'm not adding to it. And then I'm doing new diagrams, but I have to like redraw the diagram every time because otherwise I'll mess with that one. But it's better to do it that way, right? Then because if yes, I try to get the other one and erase and scratch out, it's, it becomes a mess. Yeah, you definitely want to do it separately and preserve your previous work, including your initial main diagram. Right. But drawing a totally new diagram isn't as difficult or time consuming as it might seem. Right, because I don't draw, have to remember everything. Yeah. You could draw a very bare bones, minimalistic sketch, which is like if the game has seven variables and it's an ordering game, you could just draw seven slots, which is right. simply seven horizontal short lines. Doesn't right, take right. that long. You don't have to number every single one every time. You don't have to redraw all the rules every single time. Just, right. This is really just for you. Okay. And is there any limitation on the amount of paper they give you? I mean, to, you know, with scratch paper at the test? Yeah, they give you a booklet. It's about 12 to 14 pages, eight and a half by 11 online. So it's not unlimited, but it's still more than you'll probably need. Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes me feel good. Just so you know, like I love reading your you know, your blogs every day, like they really motivate me and I need that because, you know, just when I'm like starting to feel discouraged, I'll come out of my, you know, I go into like my, my son's room, I close the door. I'm like, don't bother me for three hours. I come out and they're like, how'd you do it? I'll be like, oh, I'm frustrated today. I'm never going to do this. And then, you know, and then I'll read your blog. I'm like, okay, I'm back, getting back on the horse and I'm going to, you know, and try it again. So, so your stuff's been really helpful and I'm recommending it to my son too. So when he starts studying, um, you know, he'll also, you know, start with you too. Oh, nice, Jessica. I'm really glad to hear it. I'm glad to help the blog's been helping and the materials are helping you. Yes. Before we sign off, what would you say is the biggest insight you got from our call today? I would say just like you reassuring that what I'm doing is the, is the right way. Like I feel like, okay, I'm not so lost. Um, and you know, just, just the fact that you're agreeing with what I was thinking in my head and that there you know, really was no big disconnect was very reassuring. Awesome. Well, please keep in touch and let me know if I can help in any way as you move forward. Will do. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.